Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to worship. It is very nice to see your smiling faces this morning. I know the Spirit of God from us right here this morning. And if we have any visitors among us, let me officially welcome you. And to our regular members, please feel welcome. Before we begin, do we have any announcements? Yes, Francie. Um, just to make sure everyone's at community. If we we'll have any community, that's first. Second, um, there was a change of date. The city came with a new meeting now, May 1st, no open house. Uh, just to let everyone know. Next week, we're having the cake get ready for the children. And we're having the palm break. And the following week, we're having a little Easter egg come outside, and all the adults are welcome. Um, if anyone can order flowers yet for Easter, if you want to see me at the church, we can order flowers. Uh, I did put um, I did put more than what you said. I can have a few extra days to be at the job. That's that's all that's going on. Thank you. Yes, Charlie. Yesterday was our pancake breakfast, and it was a success. There were 29 people there, and as I stood by and watched, they all had a great time. I'd like to thank our volunteer cooks, Jennifer and Nancy. And um, if you weren't there, see you on May 6th. Thank you. Thank you. We're having a lunch watch for boys this week. Uh, it was Joey's birthday on um, Saturday when he was arrested. He would have been 25 years old. Any more announcements? Okay, so we are gathered here this morning, and who are we here to worship? God. We never know as to what time the Holy Spirit enters our worship service. We know he does. So let us just take a moment to welcome him. Let us pray. Holy One, thank you for this moment here this morning where we sit and will try to worship your name in spirit and in truth. Be with us. Be your guide. Be your leader, Father. It is not about us. It is about Praise in your holy name, and this we will do wonderfully. In the name of Jesus, amen. So please join me in our call to worship, printed in your worship bulletin. Arise, my people, and let us lift our hands up high in praise to the Lord of the heavens.
It is written that many years ago, by faith, the children of Israel walked through the Red Sea on dry land. When we confide in humans, the possibility is limited. But when we confide in the Lord of hosts, the possibility is limitless. Today we worship the Lord. We call on your holy name to fix the unhappiness and desire in our lives. He just wants and for all how to truly forgive and forget. And to really learn to love thy neighbor as thyself. We ask in simplicity, knowing that you will bless abundantly, because nothing is impossible with the Lord. Who is on the Lord's side of all his friends? And today we cling to you, Lord Jesus, the rock of our salvation. Amen. Please join me now in the call to praise. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. O Lord, open thou all lips. And thou shalt show us thy praises. How many of us love the IRS? 
<laughs> After losing two nights of sleep and snapping at everyone who tried to have a casual conversation with him, I know how that feels. Johnny knew that the time would come when he just had to muster the courage, open the letter. He had to face the truth. He had to open the envelope to see what was inside. So on the third day, after receiving the letter from the IRS, Johnny started to consider what it would feel like to lose his home, to live on the street. He had no money to pay back the IRS. But imagine how shocked he was when five days went by and finally, he had to open the letter. So when he opened the letter, to his surprise, Johnny found it was a check from the IRS. The IRS had recalculated and found out that they owed Johnny and not the other way around. That's good news, right? So Christian friends, have you ever been in a similar situation like Johnny? A situation where you feared for the worst and coming to find out it really was a blessing or a reward. Our scripture reading today points us to a similar situation. When Jesus knew the hour was approaching, when he would go to the cross. Going to the cross was a life-changing event for him and his disciples. The cross represented a lot of pain and anguish. And it would be the last time in his three-year ministry that Jesus would walk the dusty roads of Jerusalem. They had no cars in those days. They had no horses and carriage to take them by. As I said, there was no Uber, no lift, no train. They had to walk the dusty roads. And this time, this trip would be different. Going to Jerusalem <coughs> would be the last journey. So Jesus tried to give his disciples a heads up of the events that were about to unfold when he took that fateful journey into Jerusalem. And look, the gospel writer, you know that Luke was a physician, and he is writing to us, the Gentile. Anyone who's not a Jew is a Gentile. The Bible recognized two races of people, either a Jew or a Gentile. So Luke, being a Gentile and a doctor, he wrote the gospel of Luke to us. And he is saying, Jesus, He's quoting Jesus. Jesus said, Behold, we will go up to Jerusalem. And if you look at the map, Jerusalem is up. We will go up to Jerusalem, and all the things that the prophets wrote about me in the scriptures will come to pass. We know all the prophets wrote about Jesus. The whole Bible is centered around just one person. Jesus is the central theme of the Bible. And Jesus said to his disciples, when we get to Jerusalem, this is what will happen. One, one of you will betray me. Number two, the authorities, they will arrest me and deliver me to the Gentiles. Number three, they will mock me. Number four, they will spit on me. Number five, they will spitefully treat me. Number six, they will scourge me. To scourge me, they will beat me up. They will give me a lynching, that's not a nice word. Number seven, they will accuse me. Number eight, they will try me and they will find me guilty. 
Number nine, they will put me to death by crucifixion. Nine steps. But here is your hope, although I, Jesus, although I will die, but on the third day, I will rise again. The disciples heard it first, that on the third day, Jesus will rise again. But the disciples understood none of these things in their lifetime. Who would die and rise again? That was not possible. The story of the resurrection was hidden from them. Their eyes were not yet open to understand the scriptures. It is mentioned 700 years before Jesus was born, a baby in Bethlehem that he would go to the cross. The prophet Isaiah, in Isaiah 53, 5, Isaiah was talking of Jesus. Isaiah is 700 years, or was 700 years before Jesus. Isaiah wrote in Isaiah 53, 5, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. You can say amen. amen. I've been in conversations where I hear people say, what kind of a God would allow his son to hang on a cross and die? And my response is, do you even know the scriptures? So when we hear people denying or questioning the resurrection of Jesus, some say they believe 40%, some say 60%, and it depends on how intellectual they are. But always remember when we hear people questioning the resurrection of Jesus, this is our golden opportunity to point them to Isaiah or Isaiah 53 5. Jesus went to the cross to pay the price of our sins once and for all. The sins that plagued the world and all of humanity which started when Adam and Eve sinned in the Garden of Eden. I hope you will believe the story of Adam and Eve. When they sinned, they lost the title deed of the earth to the devil. When we buy a house, if we pay it in full, we have the title deed. If we buy a car, if we pay it in full, we get the title deed. If we finance the car, when it's paid in full, you get the title deed. The earth has a title deed. This is new learning. God gave that to Adam in the garden. And when he sinned, Satan got the title of Eve. God had to get it back. It's not his. The earth does not belong to the devil. So Father, Son, and Holy Spirit came together, the meeting of the minds. One had to die, so the other two could raise the one that would die. Somebody had to raise somebody up from the dead. I'll let you chew on that a little bit. So Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the life, went to the cross to atone for our sins because he loves us so much. Jesus said that none should perish. He had to give each and every one of us a chance for salvation. And in Genesis 3.15, how many of us know that the Virgin Mary is mentioned in Genesis 3.15? This is when it all started, the moment they sinned. In so many words, in Genesis 3.15, Jesus, the Good Shepherd, Father of the world, he said, I will put enmity between thee and the woman. 
between thy seed and her seed, and he shall bruise his head. Which means that at the cross, Satan will cause Jesus to suffer. The crown of thorn that was placed on his head, that's the bruising of the head. And you shall bruise his heel. And we know it means that Jesus rose triumphantly from the dead. By dying on the cross, Jesus created the way for all of humanity to receive salvation. And we know that many in our world, sometimes in conversation, we love to blame the woman for enticing Adam, who ate the fruit. But let it be known that it also took one woman to bear the seed that would give birth to the Savior of the world. And I want you to chew on that a little bit more. In Genesis 3.15, here comes the Virgin Mary. And Mary, if Isaiah was 700 years before Jesus, the story from Genesis to Isaiah, that's about 2,000 years. And Mary is already mentioned and she was nowhere to be born. So when we hear people questioning the story of Adam and Eve, I always say, so where do you think all these people in the Bible came from? There is a genealogy, follow the genealogy. We are not sitting here by accident this morning. We all have a genealogy. We all came from somewhere, whether we don't like our family or not. Is that true? We may not like the family that God gave us, but it is our family. That's the ones we have to cherish. God knew why he gave them to us, to birth us. So Christian friends, as I try to bring you this message this morning, just remember that Jesus did not have to wait five days in desperation to open that envelope. Jesus knew what was in the envelope. He knew what was going to unfold when he took that last journey into Jerusalem with his disciples. And we know it was Judas who betrayed him. So when the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit came together in the meeting of the minds, Jesus opted for the one who would die. But how was he to die? So there was a time when the Spirit and the Son and the Father came together that Jesus would come to earth in the form of a baby, in human form. It is a time when Jesus came to earth to reconcile unto himself us, the sinful people, by dying on the cross. Somebody had to step out from the Trinity, came down to earth in the form of a baby, he started from the very bottom. We come into this world, not 16 and 17, thinking we know everything. We come into this world helpless as babies. And he grew up, the boy Jesus grew up. And he would be in the temple talking with the scribes and the Pharisees, the Sanhedrins and the Sadducees. They were amazed at his teachings. He was only 12 at the time, and they wondered how could a 12-year-old know so much? They had no idea he was God in the flesh. In Hebrews 9.22, we learn that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. There are many churches who don't even mention the blood. Galatians 1.1, but the Father raised Jesus from the dead. Jesus was raised from the dead on the third day. 
Why? Because after three days, when the body is buried, that's when it begins to decompose and decay. The body of God could not decay. He is God. Therefore, it had to burst out of the grave. And we know that Jesus arose from the grave. It had to be three days. Hebrews 10, 12, after he offered himself as a sacrifice for sins, the work was done. He sat down at the right hand of God with a deep breath. For henceforth, expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. All those who don't believe are his enemies. For by one offering of shedding of his blood, he perfected forever them that are sanctified. And now when we believe in the power of his resurrection, we acquire that boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. Hebrews 10, 37. We can only take this all by faith. For yet a little while, and Jesus will come again. Jesus will not tarry. His first disciple, Simon Peter, said in 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 3, God is not slack. From the time you were born, you heard the scriptures that Jesus will come again, and many laugh. Where is this Jesus who said he will be coming back? He's given us all the time we need. Peter said, I was a disciple, and I was there. Jesus is not slack. The only reason why it's taken so long, he's given each and every one a chance for eternal salvation before we come to the day of Christ and the day of the Lord. So let us take this all by faith. For, by, for the just shall live by faith, and if we stop believing in Jesus, we may draw back into perdition. Perdition means eternal damnation. We don't want to go there. Therefore, do not counsel with those who do not believe in the resurrection story of Jesus. In Psalms chapter 2, verse 4, the resurrection is also mentioned there. If you have a chance, you can read the first five verses of Psalms chapter 2. But the Father is saying, they will take counsel against my son. You know, Pilate, the Roman governor, they sat at council in the wee hours of the morning by candlelight, and they judged him secretly. They had to find him guilty before morning came and people started waking up. So they got through the trial hastily. And we know they broke the Eighth Commandment. They bore false witness against Jesus and found him guilty. So Christian friends, this is our time for contemplation. Remember that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. It is a good thing to praise the Lord. He is the fruit of our lips. Let us give thanks to his name. Let us be good to one another. Let us be able to share with one another. And when we do these things, God will be well pleased of us. We have to pray, keep praying for a good conscience, let us try to live honestly, let us contemplate on the ministry of Jesus. There are about 40 parables in the New Testament. Testament. And may God of peace, the God of peace, allow you to do his will. And when you do, the Lord will be working with you through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory 
on our bus and never. Amen. As we get into our time of communion, let us turn to hymn number 288. Let us break bread together.
wherever you are going, come and be fed, come and be refreshed. Let us all come and be filled with new life. Let us pray. Consecrate, therefore, by your Holy Spirit, dear Lord, these gifts of bread and cup, and bless us that as we receive them at this table, may we offer you all faith and praise, that we may be united with Christ and with one another, and may we continue faithfully in all things. Amen. So we know that on the night of betrayal and desertion, Jesus took the bread and he broke it. And he said, this is my body that is broken for you. And every time you do this, you do it in remembrance of me. Jesus, the bread of life, let us take and let us eat. And in the same manner, Jesus took the cup and he poured it out and he said, this is the covenant of my blood that is shed for you. And every time you do it, you do it in remembrance of me. This is the cup of joy, the cup of life. Let us drink. me now in our prayer of thanksgiving. Let us read slowly. With grateful hearts we praise you, O God, for your great goodness in the giving of Christ. Through sacred memory, Christ has come to us and fed us at this table. Strengthen us by your grace to fellowship with Christ Stir us to share Christ's cross in daily sacrificial service.
your blessings here today. All those who have given, and those, even those who could not give anything today. Father, we try to honor your name. You have given us the spirit of wisdom and understanding. And we know it's a blessed thing to bless back to the Lord. Bless all that we offer you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Please be seated. So at this moment, we come to a time of silent prayer. Does anyone have a joy or a concern that they wish to share? Yes. Uh, my father has been unable to walk for a year almost. She's had surgery and she is actually doing well and starting to walk. And the therapist told her she's exactly where she's supposed to be. So it's coming to an end. What is her name? Cheryl. Cheryl. Lead us, Heavenly Father, lead us. Because we have no help but you. In the spirit of love, you went to the cross. As a way of giving each and every one a chance for salvation. Today in worship, dear Father, we come to you. 
I know that many hearts may be broken. Our joys sometimes they are not so revealing. There are many who are jobless and wondering where the next paycheck will come from. Our needs are endless. Our rent is due, our mortgages are due. Some are paid off, but there are many who are still struggling, even to make it from day to day. Many who are suffering from addictions and the families and friends that have to put up with them. There are many who are sick and troubled. We remember those who have no place to call home, never had an address. We remember those who walk the streets, they have lost all hope. Many who are troubled, many who are afraid, and there are many who have lost all hope. We remember those who are mentally challenged, the hearing impaired, those who are speech impaired, the seeing impaired. We never stop once to think about them. We also remember the little people who don't fit into society in our minds. Those whom we refer to as the dwarfs, yes, we pray for them too. And we know that in the Bible you exalted them. You exalted Zacchaeus, who was a little man. Teach us how to embrace those who do not look like us, talk like us, dress like us, and sound like us. Heal our bodies this day, dear Jesus. And in prayer, we lift up our entire congregation, all those who are sitting here today, all those who are listening via Facebook, all those under the hearing of my voice. We lift up in prayer Cheryl, Bert, who had a birthday, Elizabeth, Fanny, Dean, Janie, Tina, Jackie. Those who work tirelessly day by day to bring this worship service together, our trustees, our deacons, and everyone else. Be with us, dear Master, creating us a new heart and a new soul, so that when we leave this place, we will be overjoyed, even though we may still have troubles, but we have the knowledge that we can look up. Many times we don't remember to look up. And you have told us to look up. When the troubles come to our door, let us take a moment to take a deep breath and just look up. And to say, thy will be done. Those are magical words that Jesus can hear and he will meet us always in our sorrows and our struggles. Father, bring joy, bring happiness, bring healing to our church and to our entire world. The people of Ukraine and everyone else who is suffering, Lord, have mercy on us. We pray all this in the name of Jesus. The one who taught us how to pray, when he said, Our oh, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven.
comes from the red window. Hymn number 485, 485, 485. This is my father's world.